Section 5 of the Dhammapada Chapters 19 through 22 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Dennis Sayers The Dhammapada Translated by F. Max Muller Section 5 Chapter 19 The Just A man is not just if he carries a matter by violence. No, he who distinguishes both right and wrong, who is learned and leads others, not by violence, but by law and equity, and who is guarded by the law and intelligent, he is called just. A man is not learned because he talks much. He who is patient, free from hatred and fear, he is called learned. A man is not a supporter of the law because he talks much, even if a man has learnt little, but sees the law bodily. He is a supporter of the law, a man who never neglects the law. A man is not an elder because his head is gray. His age may be ripe, but he is called old in vain. He in whom there is truth, virtue, love, restraint, moderation, he who is free from impurity and is wise, he is called an elder. An envious, greedy, dishonest man does not become respectable by means of much talking only, or by the beauty of his complexion. He in whom all this is destroyed, and taken out with the very root, he, when freed from hatred and wise, is called respectable. Not by tonsure does an undisciplined man who speaks falsehood become a samana. Can a man be a samana who is still held captive by desire and greediness? He who always quiets the evil, whether small or large, he is called a samana, a quiet man, because he has quieted all evil. A man is not a mendicant, or bhikshu, simply because he asks others for alms. He who adopts the whole law is a bhikshu, not he who only begs. He who is above good and evil, who is chaste, who with knowledge passes through the world, he indeed is called a bhikshu. A man is not a muni because he observes silence, if he is foolish and ignorant, but the wise who, taking the balance, chooses the good and avoids evil, he is a muni, and is a muni thereby. He who in this world weighs both sides is called a muni. A man is not an elect, an araya, because he injures living creatures, because he has pity on all living creatures, therefore is a man called Araya. Not only by discipline and vows, not only by much learning, not by entering into a trance, not by sleeping alone, do I earn the happiness of release which no worldling can know. Bhikshu, be not confident, as long as thou hast not attained the extinction of desires. End of chapter 19 Chapter 20 The Way The best of ways is the eightfold, the best of truths, the four words, the best of virtues, passionlessness, the best of men, he who has eyes to see. This is the way, there is no other that leads to the purifying of intelligence. Go on this way, 
everything else is the deceit of Mara, the tempter. If you go on this way, you will make an end of pain. The way was preached by me when I had understood the removal of the thorns in the flesh. You yourself must make an effort. The Tathagatas, the Buddhas, are only preachers. The thoughtful who enter the way are freed from the bond of Mara. All created things perish. He who knows and sees this becomes passive in pain. This is the way to purity. All created things are grief and pain. He who knows and sees this becomes passive in pain. This is the way that leads to purity. All forms are unreal. He who knows and sees this becomes passive in pain. This is the way that leads to purity. He who does not rouse himself when it is time to rise, who, though young and strong, is full of sloth, whose will and thought are weak, that lazy and idle man will never find the way to knowledge. Watching his speech, well restrained in mind, let a man never commit any wrong with his body. Let a man but keep these three roads of action clear, and he will achieve the way which is taught by the wise. Through zeal, knowledge is gotten. Through lack of zeal, knowledge is lost. Let a man who knows this double path of gain and loss thus place himself that knowledge may grow. Cut down the whole forest of lust, not a tree only. Danger comes out of the forest of lust. When you have cut down both the forest of lust and its undergrowth, then, Bhikshus, you will be rid of the forest and free. So long as the love of man towards women, even the smallest, is not destroyed, so long is his mind in bondage, as the calf that drinks milk is to its mother. Cut out the love of self, like an autumn lotus, with thy hand. Cherish the road of peace. Nirvana has been shown by Sugata, the Buddha. Here I shall dwell in the rain, here in winter and summer. Thus the fool meditates, and does not think of his death. Death comes and carries off that man, praised for his children and flocks, his mind distracted, as a flood carries off a sleeping village. Sons are no help, nor a father, nor relations. There is no help from kinsfolk for one whom death has seized. A wise and good man, who knows the meaning of this, should quickly clear the way that leads to nirvana. End of chapter 20 Chapter 21 Miscellaneous If by leaving a small pleasure one sees a great pleasure, let a wise man leave the small pleasure, and look to the great. He who, by causing pain to others, wishes to obtain pleasure for himself, he, entangled in the bonds of hatred, will never be free from hatred. What ought to be done is neglected. What ought not to be done is done. The desires of unruly, thoughtless people are always increasing. But they whose whole watchfulness is always directed to their body, who do not follow what ought not to be done, and who steadfastly do what ought to be done, the desires of such watchful and wise people will come to an end. A true brahmana goes scatheless. Though he have killed father and mother, 
and two valiant kings, though he has destroyed a kingdom with all its subjects. A true Brahmana goes scatheless, though he have killed father and mother, and two holy kings, and an eminent man besides. The disciples of Gautama, Buddha, are always well awake, and their thoughts day and night are always set on Buddha. The disciples of Gautama are always well awake, and their thoughts day and night are always set on the law. The disciples of Gautama are always well awake, and their thoughts day and night are always set on the church. The disciples of Gotama are always well awake, and their thoughts day and night are always set on their body. The disciples of Gotama are always well awake, and their mind day and night always delights in compassion. The disciples of Gotama are always well awake, and their mind day and night always delights in meditation. It is hard to leave the world to become a friar. It is hard to enjoy the world. Hard is the monastery. Painful are the houses. Painful it is to dwell with equals, to share everything in common. And the itinerant mendicant is beset with pain. Therefore, let no man be an itinerant mendicant, and he will not be beset with pain. Whatever place a faithful, virtuous, celebrated, and wealthy man chooses, there he is respected. Good people shine from afar, like the snowy mountains. Bad people are not seen, like arrows shot by night. He alone who, without ceasing, practices the duty of sitting alone and sleeping alone, he, subduing himself, will rejoice in the destruction of all desires alone, as if living in a forest. End of chapter 21 Chapter 22 The Downward Course He who says what is not goes to hell. He also who, having done a thing, says, I have not done it. After death both are equal. They are men with evil deeds in the next world. Many men whose shoulders are covered with the yellow gown are ill-conditioned and unrestrained. Such evildoers by their evil deeds go to hell. Better it would be to swallow a heated iron ball like flaring fire than that a bad, unrestrained fellow should live on the charity of the land. Four things does a reckless man gain who covets his neighbor's wife a bad reputation, an uncomfortable bed, thirdly, punishment, and lastly, hell. There is bad reputation, and the evil way to hell. There is the short pleasure of the frightened in the arms of the frightened, and the king imposes heavy punishment. Therefore, let no man think of his neighbor's wife. As a grass blade, if badly grasped, cuts the arm, badly practiced asceticism leads to hell. An act carelessly performed, a broken vow, and hesitating obedience to discipline, all this brings no great reward. If anything is to be done, let a man do it. Let him attack it vigorously. A careless pilgrim only scatters the dust of his passions more widely. 
An evil deed is better left undone, for a man repents of it afterwards. A good deed is better done, for having done it, one does not repent. Like a well-guarded frontier fort, with defenses within and without, so let a man guard himself. Not a moment should escape, for they who allow the right moment to pass suffer pain when they are in hell. They who are ashamed of what they ought not to be ashamed of and are not ashamed of what they ought to be ashamed of, such men, embracing false doctrines, enter the evil path. They who fear when they ought not to fear, and fear not when they ought to fear, such men, embracing false doctrines, enter the evil path. They who forbid when there is nothing to be forbidden, and forbid not when there is something to be forbidden, such men, embracing false doctrines, enter the evil path. They who know what is forbidden as forbidden, and what is not forbidden as not forbidden, such men, embracing the true doctrine, enter the good path. End of chapter 22 and end of section 5 Read by Dennis Ayers for LibriVox Summer 2007